Hey guys, welcome back to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick, and I've had way too much coffee. Now, if you've been following along with this build, you would have seen that we rolled up these roof sections, five in total, rolled some flanges, pinned everything together on screws, put a few tacks across the front of this piece here. Still needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and mocked it up, and it's looking pretty good up there. But as for today, I'm not sure what we're gonna tackle. Are we gonna finalize everything up there, trim everything up and butt it together, weld it, or are we gonna tackle this hood? Or are we gonna tackle the interior? Or do we tackle the back? When it comes to the hood, you might notice there's a few ripples in it because this whole section is not, doesn't have any structure underneath. We did some stuff in the front, but we never got around to doing the structure at the back here. These cheeks are kind of flopping around in the wind. If I lift this up, you'll see what I mean. Uh, it can't have that. Once it's all painted, you want this to come down nice, precise, and fit every time without scratching any paint. So we can get working on that. Or inside the car, we've got this rod that I formed up to represent the instrumentation cluster. And it's gonna be a pod that kind of covers all that up there with the gauges set back inside and we'll have a dash main section that we can form up and install. Or if we come back here, we can work on this taillight area. Uh, we formed up these sheet metal pieces that cover the taillights last time, and we're gonna have to take and tip them ever so slightly to start coming into a channel that we have to fabricate over and around and around that light for an LED strip to go into. And then we have to take and join all this stuff together into one unit. You can see here, I was talking about a license plate light, license plate area. We need to fabricate a section, where is my finger, right there, that joins this lower area to that. Uh, passenger side quarter panel has been shaped up. It's on the shelf here. We'll have to get that in place. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna start with first today. I'm thinking the hood at this point. See, a couple minutes walking around the car. Uh, I think that's what we're going to start with. All this excess material up to the green line has to be trimmed away. The green line is the flange that gets hemmed underneath to pick up the structure. And we need to figure out, that's a little sketch I was doing there, of how everything's going to come together inside to clear those webs. I've made some indications as to where we're going to bend. Uh, tolerance is going to be pretty tight. Up front here, there's gonna be a panel that covers up the engine area. We could always leave this open, but you don't wanna see the engine. I don't wanna see the engine. I want a nice, smooth, clean body all the way through. And these panels will actually stay behind because of the suspension. The hood will close on this flange right here. Might be a rubber seal there, and that'll clean all that up. We still have to finish up the top corners as well as the lower fascia area. So, yeah, it's been decided. Let's work on this hood and start by trimming off that material. We'll flip everything open and then we can go ahead and start making up some templates as well as determine the final curvature of this top here. You see how this is up? This has to come down to about there, just like that, see? Without my fingers pushing on it. And then from that, we can go ahead and make up a a template to create a piece that'll hook into all this in here. So a lot going on, but those are really the last main sections of this of this build. We've got the hood, got the roof. Oh yeah, the structure. I know a lot of guys like to see how the structure is done, so we're going to get into that. But I need to finish the outside roof skin, get that all joined together. You can see the overlap, the red indication lines where we're going to be trimming things off for a butt weld and all that's going to be joined up and welded together and one final thing before we start joining is I need to create a final flange around the outside back edge for the glass to sit on. Glass is over there and we have to create a lip on the inside roll this up to pick up the glass and once all that is done then the roof section can come off as a whole and we can trace sections out, more sections, a lot of sections. Trace out sections for the structure, which is gonna go into there, and that structure will tie into the B pillar area. This will all be reinforced up in through here. So that'll all tie in to the support for the steering column. So it'll all be strong. Because right now, 
it's not bad for a wire frame. But the thing is, I've had a lot of questions about this. Do we leave the wire frame in place? And the answer to that is no, that comes out. It's only meant there as a guide. And for those that don't believe that we do take them out, this project here, I have been working with only a one-sided wire frame. There's no wire frame on the passenger side, as you can see. So you see these panels are kind of, they're not bad, but they're dangling in, in mid-air. Except for the back there, there's a little rod holding that up. In short, we don't leave wire frame bucks underneath the skin of any body that we do. It's not a Super Ligera style build where you have tubing inside and the skin wraps around that tubing. Uh, we have it uh, in terms of like an OEM type of vehicle where we have structural webs within the car. You can check out the 1944 Ford build. There's a card up above and you can see how we did the structure inside the cab for that. Yeah, that flange needs to be trimmed up there. You know, we need to finalize a few things, finish the beating, but you know, we're getting there. All this here, I bumped my knee again. This piece of box tubing is going to be removed. This stays behind to support the rad. We don't want that rad chattering when the car is going down the road. And those rods back there, they'll all be gone. So let's get to work on the front clamshell and see if we can get that pivoting nicely. There's a few more things that need to be done up in under here to support this structure, tie it in from side to side. But I'd like to get this back, these cheeks, if you will, um, sitting in such a way that they don't move, they're rigid. And then we can go ahead and finish the front there. So I spaced out all of my lines based on the three quarter inch tape, the half inch tape for the flange, and then ran Sharpie. The hood skin is 20 gauge. It's not too bad to cut it by hand. I thought I locked those wheels. Okay, so with that gone, a couple man eaters there. show you what I'm talking about when it comes to man eaters, we call them nick eaters too. See these guys here? Just It was kind of tough to get this, the snips in from this angle and you end up with these little burrs that will pierce just about anything including your skin and it's not too pleasant when it hits the bone. See that? They're pretty darn sharp. So I will leave, actually, take that back, I have a different color Sharpie. I'm going to run a line along the back edge of that tape, and that's going to be the bend line for that flange to roll underneath. There we go. So this has to come down like that, yeah. To get a nice consistent curve for this hood here, sort of, we need to take and clamp a piece of cardboard to the firewall somehow so that we can scribe this curvature onto that cardboard. And then we can go ahead and transpose the cardboard onto sheet metal, roll some edges, and we can then form a web that's going to sit probably back in here down under the skin to pick up some channels that we're going to form up on these cheeks so these cheeks don't move around. 
Yeah, right there is going to be good. that down. So I want this center to have a crown to it. I don't want it to be flat. Nothing beats CAD design. Cardboard aided design. This is going to be curvature of the hood. I see a problem already. Do you guys see it? It's this thing here. It's kind of flexing. Just enough to hold together until we fit it, try it. If it's good, then we will run with this piece. So this is the front and passenger side. So we're going to very carefully slide this in. It's going to come down like that. That goes into that there spot. And that's it. We're going to take and fold this template in half, make sure it is consistent from side to side in case my chronometer is off today. And we're gonna take and slide it inward to about here. So we miss the front of the firewall. There's a brake booster over there. Gotta make sure to clear that. So a lot of things happening inside. The bottom of the glass, the windshield, goes in way underneath the hood, about four or five inches from the back edge for the wipers to sit on. So if we have inch and a half from the front edge of the glass to the structural web, that should be good. So six and a quarter, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarters. Okay. Uh, we can measure from the front. 35 and three eighths. I want to see if the brake booster is going to clash with that web. Uh, We have inch and a half, or sorry, two and a half inches. So if we push that down, we got two inches. Hmm. What did I say? 35 and 3 eighths. 35 and 3 eighths. So 35 and 3 eighths puts it here, here, and wow. Okay, and the other way we can measure is how far the brake booster extends ahead of the firewall. And then we have a definite. Okay, it's five and five eighths. So six, six and a half to the front edge of the firewall. Plus the box tubing, seven and a half. And what were we saying here? Seven and three quarters, eight inches, plenty of room. Brake booster sits in here, master cylinder bolts to the front of that, that's going to be lower. That's going to be primo. Yep. Now you might be saying, whoa, Nick, I can't hear you, but you might be thinking that. And through ESP, you might be coming in and you're watching this after it's been done. But you might be saying, what's going to, you put the flange over here. What about this back edge that you're so concerned about? Well, we have to come up with a web, 
come back with a flange and into that flange tie a piece of sheet metal in that will pick up the back edge of this hood so that we have some strength there, it doesn't flop around. Yeah, now eight inches is a long way, sort of, but we're going to this edge, we're moving ahead, so it's 27 and a half, so big difference. Anything over 7, 9, 16, so you're going to run into trouble. I'm kidding. I think that's going to be good. I just ran through everything one more time, and we're going to fabricate this web at that location right there. We might even angle it back a little bit and that'll help us in reducing the distance to the back edge of the hood. Well, let's get some sheet metal out start forming that up. But before we do that, I made up some templates earlier We're going to have this channel here, it's going to sit like this, the channel outward, and this is going to diagonalize into that web there, pick up one side of it. This is going to be vertical like this, and we'll have a leg on the bottom, probably an inch leg or so, and then that's going to pick up on that. And then, to tie into this cheek here, we can't very well weld this channel, sheet metal channel, to the outside skin from the inside. You're going to see all the welds. It's not done that way. You need to tie in to the exterior perimeter surfaces. So we're going to take a roll of flange inward and then use this Cherry O template. And it's going to sit on the inside, tie into the exterior perimeter. And this channel will then weld to this inside skin and work its way up into that structural web it goes across the hood to the other side where we'll have to create one more of these and one more of these to tie everything together. So let's get some sheet metal out and start building. using a vertical web with a flange on top, flange on the bottom. The flange on top picks up a separate piece that extends back to pick up the back edge of the hood. Well, I decided to extend the two channels we have on the sides with a channel across the center. A little more work, a little heavier, but a lot stronger. channel. Now what we're going to do is tip a flange on the top one way and the other and then the back edge of the hood will tie into that flange. This is going to be nice. Five eighths of an inch. Just out of curiosity. We're sitting at 5 eighths, 5 eighths. Let's go run this through the tipping wheel, I hope, and uh, give it that flange. Then we can get the two side pieces bent and start working our way from the bottom up. We can get by by the skin of our teeth. So 
We're starting to buckle here. Uh, we have to shrink this down. It's too much material. I'm going to tip this one more time, bring it up a little bit higher so it's level with the hood, and then we'll make up those two side pieces. All right, guys, so we got the hood flipped forward and fabricated the two uprights and just lightly tacked them to the bottom flange. Uh, they are going to be in place to help us hold that cross member that goes from side to side. And then the trickiest part is going to be establishing the width of the hood when it comes down into the closed position. Gone ahead, rearranged some of the sheet metal here. That's where the hood will be uh, when it's closed. And this is just a guide right now. The other side's gone because we cut it away. So this is essentially a datum point that I'm going to, to establish where that hood is going to be when it's closed. So let's get you guys on the tripod and hopefully with my three arms I can get that cross member in place and support it. I don't know if I can get it in there. It's going to sit on top of that, like that, and there. Hmm. i got to reach. take the hood off, do it on the table, but then it's going to be a little bit tricky to make sure we get the right width. So it has to be done in place. So that's one. Stay. That's one. Oh, my tacks are holding. And this is the tricky part right here. So I bring that down, have this stay in place, and the my yeah, darn. Okay, this isn't gonna work. One tack just broke, so it's gonna keep pivoting. I need to re-tack it. I think it's gonna work though. Okay, let's try this again. Ooh. Front. Come on. See how well that works? Now the one thing I didn't grab was a pair of vice grips. A little more weight on there. But she's staying put. Do I need to say stay? Stay. Ah, uh, yeah. Gonna move that structure this way a little bit. Reach in here with the vice grips, hopefully. Wrong setting. See, it's not going to work out too well. I don't want to screw it in terms of putting a screw into it, and I don't want to tack it. Oh, okay, it's all the way over. See that front piece, that channel is a bit long.
Hmm. If we close this and align everything to the body, I might be able to get up underneath, I'm not sure, and put two small tacks at the width we want it at. Because right now, this is just arbitrary. I might bring it down, it might not fit. That vice grip's gonna be in the way. So, yes, let's do that. We'll close it with that in place, see how it goes. Uh, just looking to see if we have the room. It's pushing the structure that way, it's not good. Okay. See, right away it dropped back to where it should be. Staying put, let's close it, see how it looks. This is gonna be interesting. If you guys can grab that corner, I'd really appreciate it. Well, this feels a lot better coming down, except for that. My arm is stuck. Yeah, this side is really opened up. Now we took and roll this flange over and we need to take and stretch this corner out because it's pulling the panel a little bit odd. You know. And you see we have about four inches space there. This has to come down. We're resting on. Oh yeah, I got some blocking in on up underneath there to keep that cardboard in the right position. And we just need to make sure that the engine has enough room Yeah, this is a mock-up engine and we've got everything all spaced out based on the overall dimensions of the new EcoBoost that he's going to be putting in. But I just wanted something in place to go by. If it's just a hole, I'd have to use a bunch of blocking and crates and whatever. And here, this gives us a pretty good reference. Okay, so I went ahead and closed the hood. Got some spacers in there, tacked those in place so that nothing was moving. Climbed up inside here and tacked those uprights to the cross member. Now that's gonna be cleaned up up there. This is still early stages, but crucial thing was to get these side webs spaced out accordingly on both sides where they're gonna be the, for the final time and get everything tied in in here. There's a couple little tacks on the bottom, a couple at the top. And then what we're gonna do is Put a web in through here to stop the sides from moving in and out. There's lots of room in here. Not going to interfere with anything in the engine compartment in that area. On the driver's side, we will have a little clearance work to do just above that brake booster there. See how it's almost touching? If not touching, it looks like it's touching. Uh, we're going to have to take and radius that up and through there so that we have plenty of clearance. But for now, that will be okay. And again, there's some awkward tacks up there. The structure is going to be removed later on once we have everything fitting the way we want it to. All those corners up and through there are going to be cleaned up, radius properly, so it looks factory. Uh, that right now just, it's, like I mentioned, the early stages. And we have a nice space between the skin and there, so that's a good thing. Uh, you don't want them touching. But the biggest thing before getting that structure in was to get that hood pinned so that it wasn't moving around. And so that the final spacing of all the panels is going to be where it needs to be. Okay, so I've cut out two pieces of 20 gauge sheet metal for the gussets. And even though it's 20 gauge, it has some body to it. We're gonna make it stronger by creating some offsets and some bends into this, into this piece here. Uh, you can roll a 16 gauge, that's really strong, but it's really heavy too. We wanna keep the weight down. Just using an offset wheel here and rolling the edge. Punch a bunch of holes in this and we'll weld through those holes in the form of plug welds. Okay, so there is one offset. I need to take a hammer and dolly, flatten it out a little bit because it's starting to curl, but that's gonna tie in, a little offset there, it's gonna tie in to the vertical and the horizontal channel. Uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. This is going to be, let's see, passenger side. 
And to make sure I don't mess up, we need to make one mirror opposite. So that way, that way, yes, this way. Using my micrometer, offsetting 5 eighths of an inch. Next step is take and bend this over and then take the leading edge and break that a little bit more to form a channel. Because of this offset, I should actually flatten that out because it's not going to sit right in the break. Get this piece in. Now, I guess we can do it this way. I can't bend the front edge just yet because I won't be able to get into the break. Good. Now we're going to pinch probably three-eighths of an inch. That's five-sixteenths. And that's going to be it. Just a slight bend. Let me take it all the way over. Very nice. So there we go. There's our piece. So now we can go ahead and flatten all these flanges a little bit because you can see they're kind of wavy. And we'll punch some holes and get this tacked in place. Yeah, the bench is a mess again. To make sure that the holes are the same from side to side, I'm just going to transfer some dots. Oops, stay put. I should clamp it. There we go. At least the holes will be the same from side to side. Okay, as you can see, we've got two very nice flanges. Take some lacquer thinner, wipe off the marks, and uh, get them installed. Now, I won't be able to get you guys in along with me. Uh, what we're going to do though, I'll explain it, put a couple tacks, three, maybe four tacks with the MIG, sneak in there, tack it, and try it. If everything works out really well, pull the structure out and final weld everything. Put it back in, try it again. Not sure if we'll get around to that doing that today though. But at least we'll try opening it today. Okie dokie, so I don't know if you can see through this opening here, the gusset, we've got it installed. Let's go from this side. Yeah, back up a little bit, and there we go. So wherever I could reach, barely, I got a few tacks on there. And now we can go ahead and cut those spacers and see if how well this opens, if it opens, how well it opens. Not sure which, what to say. It's trial and error at this point. So there's the driver's side web, there's the clearance. Actually there's quite a space between the booster and that uh, front to back and sideways. Well, it looks like it's bumping, but it's not. See, a lot of, a lot of space. But we will clearance that spot up there, no big deal. Uh, yeah, so. Cut those tacks and see what happens. It might not open, might be, uh, might have to tweak it. That's the name of the game. Let's 
So if you notice that, it didn't really move. The tail moves a little bit, but we don't have that reinforcing gusset that re extends back to pick this edge up yet. Uh, we might not use the whole thing, might just come back a bit of an angle down here to get rid of this. But as you can see, our cheeks are not flapping in the wind. Okay, let's take that off. You may have noticed that it didn't jump up anymore because we've got it tensioned. This back edge will be rolled under to pick up a piece that extends forward and ties in with that channel. And well, those are our spacers. I'm not going to ooh the third time because it could all fall apart. Hmm. Hmm. It's a little bit of twist to it because there's no reinforcing piece that extends back. Uh, what if we lift it this way? Let me get you guys way back here. Because if this thing flops, I don't want anybody getting hurt. A little bit of side to side, but we are not too bad. Look at that. It has really solidified. Yeah, I see why we're binding there. This body side has to be pulled in and reinforced into there. And the dash and the supporting structure for the dash is going to take care of that. That's why that's kind of left that way. Uh, okay. If I can get this braced, I'll bring you guys in and show you how everything looks. We're okay. We've got the internal structure almost all installed. There's a few spaces between those parts. They all have to be pulled in together. And same over there. There's a space between the skin and that structure, so that's a good thing there, as well as there. Can I get you guys up higher? Can you see? We may put an aligning pin. I better not touch that right there so that when it comes down, goes into a pocket on the rocker. But that's, that's later. Right now, we have to get rid of some of the twist by reinforcing these hinges. We're only on two metal screws there. You know, there's a lot of weight up here on a few screws. So that's why we're a little bit floppy as well. So we're gonna take and reinforce that together there and start probably working on the dash in our next episode because that has to be, uh, this has to, this has to go away right here. We can't have that. This body side is removable at the moment. This side's done, but the other side has to be pulled off so that we can finish up all the welding on the panels. Some of it's done, some is not. So we have to join all that together. Yeah. So these pieces have to all come apart. The buck has to be removed. There's some more structure, the buck in here, that has to come out. And then we can go ahead, weld everything solid, and get it mounted for the final time. I think one more thing I'd like to do today, before we wrap things up, is to start the process of tipping the flanges. See that black line right there? Start the process of tipping that over into the channel area for the LED. It's gonna involve some tipping, some shrinking, and some stretching. This, this top corner has to shrink, and this bottom area will have to stretch as it comes down. Everything's been scribed. You see the marks there, the witness lines. We're going to close this. Now you see how there is a little bit of wobble from side to side. We're going to eliminate that after by finishing the structure inside. Now hopefully I can pass that body side there without scratching the paint. It's not painted. Okay. She's 
shut. We are lining up with the tacks that we had there earlier. I cut them, but I cut through the center so I can see the bottom portion, top portion, and that's aligning. Now, before we go any further with this, we're gonna get the dash roughed in, get some structure in place so we can take this body side and mount it so we're not dealing with that movement there. But overall, I am happy with how this turned out. Let's go to the back, get those pieces off, and start forming those. Pop this off. You can see how dusty it is. I should have done this on the other side. Put a witness line there. Okay, first stage. You see this material here, how it's rolling up. We have to shrink that corner so that it comes down, same angle as that, before I get too much further into this piece. I go to the kick shrinker, shrink that, stretch this, come back, and we can wheel it a little bit more. I'm not looking for a crazy angle here, just maybe uh, 15 degrees or so. All right, so I just finished shrinking this corner, stretching this one, and you might see some prominent jaw marks. I'll show you how to clean that up in the next video. What we're doing today is tipping this flange. It's gonna be quite a work, bit of work when it comes to these parts. See how much easier that rolled through? Say, so let's go one more time. Yeah, it feels a lot better. Uh-oh. There we go. So that's the beginnings of the driver's side piece. Like I said, I'll show you next time how to fix those up to where you can't tell that anything happened. So we get this back up on here. And we'll go ahead. Where'd you go? Right here. And roll this flange. And there we have it. Using the bevel square, let's compare both sides. I will run it down the whole length, but just at the moment I wanted to see how close we were. Once we take and clean this up, I'll show you next time how we do that. We'll dial that flange in to the right angle and not a right angle as in 90 degrees, but the correct angle that we need on the car. And then we're gonna tip this bottom here and start into the channel area. That channel's gonna be fun. Okay, so this sits up here, like that, and you can see how it's not exactly sitting the way it needs to anymore because we've rolled the flange, it's flattened the panel out. So we're gonna have to do some more adjusting to get these to fit where they need to. Now it might look easy, you know, just wave your hand around, we gotta go down here, up there, over there, you know, roll this down, but there's actually a lot of work involved in just these two panels. That's why I left the quarter panels off so I can wrestle these into place where they need to go. Because you see, I rolled this flange here, it actually straightened the panel out. It doesn't follow this nice graceful contour. It's flat. So I have to shrink that and do all that. But I'm not gonna do that until I clean up these little jaw marks here. And I'll show you next time how we do that. So there's really no point in putting this panel on the car. You can do it just to, for housekeeping. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's just gonna dangle like that. Until next time. All right guys, so that's gonna be it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Next time we're gonna tackle the dash, get those panels formed up, get the structure in there so we can take and finalize these areas. Once that's done, then we'll go back to the hood, get the hood fitting better. And then we'll get onto the back. We'll finish those two back pieces and get working on that back LED light strip. 
Oh yes, just one more thing before you go. A number of people have been asking where they can find a particular video out of the hundreds of videos that we have uploaded to our YouTube channel. Now, if you go to the playlist area at the top of the page there, click on that, it'll take you to the playlist page where all of our builds and tutorials have been listed. And they've been organized in such a way that uh, it's basically the date of upload, so you can watch the progression of each build, the 40 Ford or 51 Ford, as it happened. So I hope that helps. Take care.